Hello, so it is quarter past nine on Thursday the 8th of May and I've casually decided to do a 24 hour readathon where I actually try and stay awake for 24 hours. Um, I would have liked to nap first but that hasn't happened. I still have a couple of hours but there's no way I'd be able to go to sleep and uh, wake back up. I would fall straight back asleep so... I guess I might watch some Netflix. I sort of want to just start reading, but that really defeats the point. But that is the only thing that's probably going to keep me awake. Um, the first book I want to get started on is Shadow Kiss by Rochelle Mead. This is a very chunky book, um, so I don't know whether I will actually get it done. I don't want this whole thing to be reading one book. But I want to read it, so I'm going to try. And maybe I can read this and like, alternate with different books. You'll see what happens. Either way, I'm just excited that I'm going to try and stay awake for 24 hours. It's bank holiday tomorrow, um, so I've not got work. We are having a street party at lunchtime to where we sit out. We don't have front gardens, but just driveways. We're going to sit on the path and have a picnic. Socially distancing from the neighbours. And I'm sure I had something else tomorrow. But it's gone from my brain. Oh yeah, I'm running a quiz for the family on Zoom. So there's that. Yeah, that's it. And why not watch me read for 24 hours? Hello, so it is midnight right now. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to turn the volume up on these nighttime clips because I have to be really quiet. Um, like you probably just heard someone sneeze, this the walls of this house are very thin. Um, but I am on page 148 of Shadow Kiss, that's my starting point for this readathon. Um, it's got about 440 pages, I've got 300 pages to go. Um, let's see how, how much longer it takes me to get 300 pages read. So I was reading before this and then I lay down and I got really tired and I feel like I had to force myself back up and now I feel okay. I feel okay. I may give myself a couple hours sleep because I don't think I'll survive. Okay, so it is 1am and this is going just as well as I thought it would. I'm already crashing, I'm very tired and the idea of getting into bed right now is insanely appealing. Um, I'm on page 238 I want to say, let me check, yeah, so I've read 90 pages in the past hour, pretty good. I've got quite a ways through this book just tonight. So I'm doing well, but oh my god, I'm tired. I think I might have to just go to sleep, so yeah. It's ten past one and I've given up, so good night. It is 7.30am, so I slept a full six and a half hours. I even had an alarm that went off at 6.30, which was my normal work alarm that I ignored. I'm pretty sure I spoke to Cole on the phone at like 4.30 but I'm pretty sure I was half asleep like I've had to just text him and ask if we talked because I think we did very weird yeah turns out I slept so I'm now gonna get up have some breakfast and maybe read in the garden because it's lovely outside <laughs> give you an opinion for where I am with Shadow Kiss. The camera feels wrong, I feel like I'm not looking at the camera. There? Is it there? Okay. Shadow Kiss. I keep doing it, I'm looking at my own face. Um, I am now on page 354, so I only have that left to go. And I think I've been having a bit of a dilemma lately with what books I actually want to keep after I've read them and what books are better being unhauled. So Vampire Academy, the first book I've read twice, I've annotated, I've like tabbed up, so I'm happy keeping that one. But 
I feel like this is going to be one of those series I'm more than happy to get rid of. Like my copies don't match. I haven't got any deep emotional connection to them. This book so far is leading me to think four stars. Um, something really big just happened that I really did appreciate and I wish I could just rip those pages out and keep those pages. <laughs> um, if you've read this series you'll know what I mean. Um, but I don't feel like they're that amazing. I'm really really enjoying them but in terms of books I need to keep for the rest of my life. I'm going to put them back on my shelves and I'm going to reassess next time I do an unhaul I think. Um, obviously I've still got three books to go so maybe I'll keep them until I've read them all then reassess. This could just be like a down book. Um, but Rochelle Mead, if you don't care, I'd skip a minute because I'm not going after on. Rochelle Mead, her writing is nice. Um, how she, so many cars, how there's always like conversation with Rose, like the narrator, we feel like we're chatting to her, um, which I do appreciate. But then there's a lot of things in here that are re-explained, like the damp I can't I can never pronounce it the dampiers and the Maroi um so the Maroi are the vampires and the dampiers are the protectors and we know that from book one and it's re-established in book two like they say a couple of sentences about what their duty is and whatever but then it's repeated in book three and I feel like if you got to book three you know who the Maroi are and you know what Ro Rose's job is and then there'll be things about Dimitri and it will say we can't be together because XYZ which we established in book one was repeated in book two now repeated in book three. It is quite a long book I feel like 50 pages could be cut out of waffle which is what's really stopping me against five stars I'm really enjoying it but there's so much unnecessary like discussion that we, we don't need because if you're this far into a series, you understand the world that you're in, I'd like to think. Apart from that, really enjoying it. I'm going to sit now and read. It's pretty much 100 pages to the end. So I'm going to sit in this position until I've finished my first book of the readathon. Well, my personal readathon. So it is 9.42, I think, exactly. And I just finished Shadow Kiss. So nearly 10 hours into the readathon and I've read like 300 pages so not the best but it's fine I think I'm actually going to give this 4.5 stars the ending really like bumped it up for me and then I looked back and I gave the second book four and a half stars and this was definitely on par um but if I took the length of the second book it's like half the size of this so I cut out all the crap I was talking about it would be a better book so four and a half stars. Um, now I've been buddy reading Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell with Emily at Novel Novels. So I'm going to read my 50 pages of that. Um, I think I'll head back out to the garden, have another cup of tea, read those 50 pages and then maybe get dressed into an actual outfit rather than a t-shirt and Riverdale joggers. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'll have to make a decision. <laughs> just finished my pages for today of fangirl so we only have one day left of our buddy reads i'll be finishing this off tomorrow um really love this book it's so cute and how did i read this so i read this in 2018 levi the love interest is a rancher right now i have a massive thing for ranchers and like the whole american cowboy sort of character um he he, gen he lives on a ranch and I, I didn't even notice, I don't think I knew what a ranch was so yeah, that's an extra part of the story I really loved 
Um, 50 pages left. Let's finish this off tomorrow. Last time I read this, I rated it four stars, so I've got a feeling it's going to be four stars again. Um, because there's just some little cuteness that's not there. Um, so now I'm going to get changed and pick another book. I'm not really sure what I'm going to read. So I really don't know what I want to read, so do I use the TV after this? I think I will. I think I'll just do it for inspiration. And then if I like the sound of the book, I'll read that because I'm kind of clueless on what I want to read. Um, here he is. Let's dig a little. So this is... Truly Wildly Deeply by Jenny McLaughlin. That could work. So this book I've had for a while and I think I considered unhauling it. Um, this is about Annie who's starting college and she can't wait for the adventure to begin. No more being told what to do, no more rules. Um, as a teenager with cerebral palsy, independence matters more than anything to Annie. The last thing she's looking for is romance. So it's a short book. The text is quite big. Let's do it. Okay, so quick check in. It is like nearly half one, and I'm on page 136 of Truly Wildly Deeply. I was reading this really, really quickly. I'm like halfway through. Um, and then me, mum, and my sister started having a jokey quiz outside in preparation for my quiz later. Um, we've got the street party in a bit um, where we're all going to go and sit outside of the house which I would film but my phone battery is literally about to die so yeah I'm going to take my book down maybe sit out the front and read for a bit because we don't talk to our neighbours so I'll just sit with a cup of tea and read my book and community spirit <laughs> um, yeah I'm sure it's going to be quite cute but I don't know there's apparently a DJ and a guy in a mankini dancing so it's going to be interesting so it is quarter to three and I have four chapters left so I'm gonna sit and read these and then I guess I need another book to read and um, I feel like I'm reading quite slowly but I finished a book I mean the writing on the pages is massive um I don't think I explained what this one was fully about so we've got Annie who has got cerebral palsy and she's decided to move away from the school she's been going to to go to a um like a college sixth form sort of thing half an hour away just for like a bit more independence and so she isn't known as the girl in the wheelchair anymore um, and while she's there she meets Fab who is Polish um, and he's a bit weird he's a bit over the top everything he does is embarrassing to her but he decides he has a crush on her and he would like to date her and she's she's not she doesn't want that and yeah it's it's kind of cute um, I can't see anything amazing happening in the next four chapters. I think this is going to be a three star read, but I am glad I've put my time into it. So I'm just going to finish it and give you my thoughts. Okay, so it's 2.55 to be extremely precise and I just finished Truly Wildly Deeply. I will be unhauling this. It wasn't amazing. I'm stuck on like two and a half to three stars. I think I'll stick with three. Like it was fine, but it wasn't anything special. Um, my main thing is at the end of especially like YA contemporary featuring a romance I want some sort of conclusion and it just didn't give me what I wanted um yeah wasn't wasn't great but nothing bad about it but I definitely wouldn't reach for this author stuff again I just think the writing style was maybe a little bit younger than I thought this was going to be heading in so I will be adding this to the unhaul pile if you're watching this vlog and want to give it a go let me know because you can have it it's all yours um so picking a next book I think we're gonna have to go back to the TBR tortoise um, I might not pick what he gives me, but just for a bit of inspiration. Um, I'm gonna dig this time. I never dig. I've got two. I've got three. Okay, we'll go with this one. This is 13 Minutes by Sarah Pinbrat. I, I'm not gonna <laughs> feel silly picking them out and not taking it. I'm not gonna read that one. That is a brand new book I got. It hasn't even gone up on a book haul yet. It will have done by the time you see this, but filming this hasn't even gone up on a book call yet, so I don't quite want to get to that one. Um, feels like cheating, but I just need inspiration. I'm not doing this for any set reason. Everything All at Once by Katrina Leno. I can do that. I'll do that. Okay, so Everything All at Once. It is about 360 pages long, so it's fairly big compared to the books I've been reading. Um, 
This says, Lottie Reeves is not a risk taker. She plays it safe and avoids all the ways she might get hurt. But when her beloved aunt Helen dies of cancer, Lottie fears, Lottie's fears about life and death start spiraling out of control. Aunt Helen wasn't a typical aunt. I don't say aunt, I say aunt. I don't know what's wrong with me. She was the author of a best-selling Alvin Hatter series about siblings who discover the elixir of immortality. Her writing inspired a generation of readers, but she knew how magical writing could be and that words have the power to make you see things differently. Okay, I'm not, there is another paragraph. I'm not going to read it. Only thing I'm worried about is this naked book is white. Oh, that dark blue is really lovely. I like that. Um, this is going to get messy. I don't think anyone can read a bright white book and not ruin it. Um, yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm sort of tempted to tab it, actually. Hmm. I really like tabbing hardbacks. Do I tab it? Yeah. Why not? Just before I go back outside, ignore the clothes here. That's bad. Um, I just thought I'd show you my tabbing system that I'm going to use. Um with these ones so I do have some proper post-its that are colour coordinated and I use them on like a specific set of books it's quite sad but when I just want to do uh some little tabs I've got my Wilco ones that cost me about 75p oh I just scratched myself with the packet okay um where blue is memorable green is quote yellow is funny orange is emotional and pink is romance so I'm gonna be doing that Hello again. So it's not long gone four o'clock and I've come back inside reading everything all at once. Um, I was just getting a bit too warm, like I've been out there all day. I feel like I've toasted slightly. Um, there's a couple tabs in here so far. I'm on page 78. Um, it is really, really cute. So the main character's um, aunt has died and she's left her letters with tasks. So far the tasks have been to go to a party and to go and see her old house like there's been nothing insane so I'm excited to see where it goes I know that this is I want to say fabulism I'm not sure of the right word anymore um but that hasn't been mentioned in the book yet and the main character's dad says something about um there being something off about her aunt and then um there's this guy that she meets that she then disappears so I actually put a little post-it in of one of my theories of what's going on um because I don't want to I want to tap this but I want to write in it so I've got a little post-it for my theory um but yeah I'm just gonna carry on reading inside I haven't got anything to do now till half six when I'm running my little family quiz so yeah I guess I'll get a bigger chunk of this read so it is 20 past five I am I just counted how much. I just saw the page number 180 pages into everything I never told you not everything I never told you everything all at once <laughs> I'm getting tired now um and I'm just wondering because I only have three tabs in it the latest one being like page 70 so I haven't tabbed in a hundred pages I have felt like there hasn't been anything tab worthy but I've not been not enjoying the book like I'm enjoying it but there's just nothing tabbable so what what's your guys opinion shall i take them out shall i wait and carry on reading i don't know this update has made no sense and i will probably crop it out but what i meant to say is i've only got three tabs in and i'm like halfway through the book maybe i'll put some more in towards the end if not maybe i will take them out because that would look kind of silly so it is 6 30 now the family quiz has been pushed till seven because i'm okay with plans changing it's a real issue with myself but yeah so that's happening at seven i'm on page 237 of everything everything all at once <laughs> how am i forgetting the name and um, so i really don't have that much to go i'm not sure why those pages are bunched i do know i've got post-its in there ah that's annoying there we go haven't got much left to go um and i'm, I'm gonna read a bit now until the quiz starts i guess i reckon i'll set the meeting up at like five two um yeah i'll do that i'm sort of excited sort of weirdly nervous like what if everyone's just bored and knows none of the answers um some of them are quite simple like i'm trying to even think of examples maybe i should just look at my questions oops throwing things all over my room all right like what nationality is just navibra I feel like that's an easy one. 
or um, what's the name of Peppa Pig's brother? You know, all very simple questions. So hopefully this is gonna be good. So I just filmed a whole update and people decided that was the time to come and chat to me. So, wow, that was like sassy. Didn't even mean to do that. It's nine o'clock. I've got two chapters left of everything all at once. Um, I've added a few more tabs. I think this is gonna have to be a three and a half star. Like, I'm enjoying it. It's good. But because I knew there were sort of fabulism, magical elements, that sort of spoiled the whole book. I feel like I shouldn't have known that. I can't even hold it. You can, there's nothing you can see there. Um, yeah, it sort of ruined it. So, hmm, don't know whether that was my fault or that everyone knows it's got that. If I've ruined this book for you, then <laughs> sorry. So I'm going to sit now and finish this off and get back to you with my final thoughts. Okay, so it is quarter past nine and I finished everything all at once. I nearly said everything I never told you again. Um, yeah, three and a half stars. It was not amazing. I don't think I enjoyed that there was some sort of point to the story, like dealing with grief, um, but it wasn't that great. I'm going to keep it on my shelves. I enjoyed it. Um, definitely keep it for the time being, along with my other Katrina Leno, uh, Summer of Salt, which I think I rated ever so slightly higher. Um, I liked, yeah, I liked that there was a point. I liked how it handled. People are being very loud outside. I liked that was a point. I liked her hand of grief. Um, I liked her main character. She was fine. But everything was just, it was like good, fine, but it wasn't amazing. We have a feeling that there are people down the road still sat outside their houses and people are beeping them as they go past. It's very loud. So, quarter past nine. I still have two hours and 45 minutes left of this 24 hour readathon. So, plenty of time to start the book. Oh, there's one higher than the rest. Let's see. One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. I've been wanting to get around to this. You can always see it because it's yellow. I've been wanting to get around to it for such a long time. And I always find excuses. So now is the time. So it is 10 o'clock and I'm giving up. I'm very tired. So in the last half hour I've read 30 pages of One of Us is Lying. I'm intrigued, but not enough to sit and read it while my head hurts. I'm so tired. So yeah, 30 pages of that and I will be carrying on with it tomorrow. Hopefully read it all tomorrow. Um, but I thought I'd give you a final page count. I did the adding up. Um, today, in the past 24 hours, kind of, 24 hours in two hours, I've read 8,041 pages. I'm pretty happy with that. I did a 12 hour readathon, um, the 12 hour challenge, which I'll link in the description a couple of weeks ago now, where I read about 700 pages in 12 hours. And if you think about it, I've only been awake like a little bit longer than that um, to read a thousand because I did sleep and I'm going to bed early. But yeah, 1,041 pages. Go me. So that is it. If you've watched me get on with my day, then. Thank you very much for giving me the attention. I really do appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.